Hello children, Krishna Mamiya. Today I'm back again with a new chapter from your book Hornbill and this is chapter 3 named this chapter is Discovering Tut written by A.R. Williams. Children, this is a very interesting story. We, we cannot call it a story. Actually, this is a real, real incident written by A.R. Williams. A.R. Williams her name is Anne Williams and she is a very well-known writer for National Geographic. Now let's come to the book. And uh, I really, I really recommend you to go through the Googles and search for this one. Search for the name Tut or Tujakhaten and you will come to know a lot of things about him. And I am really sure that you will enjoy reading. You will enjoy knowing more about him. So now let us come to the book. In the very starting, in the very starting is the narration from the article written by A. R. Williams in the National Geographic long back. What has she written here? In the starting she has written the article is about the finding, about the finding of when the excavation was made again. Why I'm saying again? Because this is the third time his tomb was excavated and the pharaoh was taken out of the tomb. And when the article was written, it was in, uh, it was in January 2005. She has written that a very first time when it was excavated in 1922. After that, it rested in peace without much of interference and it, it was excavated again after 80 years. So first, let us come to the first part. I'm not going paragraph wise. Uh, let us come to the third paragraph in the second page, in the middle of the page. In the middle of the page when, I'll start with the incident, when it was first taken out, when his tomb was first fi found out in 1922 by Howard Carter. Now who was o. Howard Carter? He was a British archaeologist. And uh, I think in the year 1920, he started excavating and looking for the tomb. And it took him almost two years to find out the place where the tomb was placed. And then he, then along with his workers, they dug in, dug in, dug in until they found the tomb. And he was very surprised when he went inside because. Uh, most of the artifacts it was in very very good condition and it has not been um, it has not been taken away it has not been theft it has not been stolen like they did in other tombs because perhaps because this tomb was very small in size so uh, they could not find it out so now let's come to the book When he first excavated it in 19, 1922, okay, Howard Carter, he found it out and he was stunned. He was stunned to find to look at the artifacts in gold. Everything was in gold and uh, everything was in gold and it was very brilliant. Everything was very magnificent. So why so many of artifacts were buried along with Tut? Because uh, in older days in Egypt, especially for the pharaohs, they believed. Now, what is pharaoh? Pharaoh. I'll come to the word meaning first. Let's come to the difficult words first. Okay. Saga. Saga means a long tale. This is a long tale because the incident still continues. The story has not finished. When you searched into the Google, 
Till today, you will find something new. Something new, some new discovery will be found almost every year. Pharaoh. Pharaoh is the word used for Egyptian king. Told in his forensic reconstruction, that is to construct a look-alike face after CT scan. And this is due to the modern technology. When very first time it had been excavated when he discovered the tomb. That time, those days, science was not very modernized. So he could not do the x-ray, he could not do the CT scan, nothing could be done because no technology was there back in 1922. But later, later with the modernization of science, with the modernization of the technology, all these things came up. So, our very last time, uh, they did the forensic reconstruction of the of the mummy. Okay, now what is cut it across? That is the line when you come inside the text you will find this line cut it across. Okay, so where is it? Dark bellied clouds cut scudded across the desert sky. Okay, so uh, it was about the atmosphere when the tomb was taken out for CT scan. So the writer E.R. Williams, she used the word scudded across means dark cloud. It, uh, it overclouded over the sky. Over the sky it was dark cloud around. Okay, now is the new next word. Casket gray. Casket gray here they have used it for dark cloud covering the stars because it was almost six o'clock in the January. In the January and uh, in that part of Egypt. Summers mornings are very hot, but evenings along with the sunset, the temperature cools down and the night becomes cool becomes cold and dark so it was getting dark and the stars has come up in the sky but as the tomb was taken out of CT scan uh, that time a dark cloud covered the sky sorry covered the sky covered the stars also so they've used the word casket gray okay Resurrection. Resurrection here means revive of life after death. While resurrection in the real meaning means uh, when something has been forgotten and it is revived again. That is resurrection. But here in the text we have used it for life after death. Circumvented. Circumvented means dodge the guards. Here means uh, it is on his third page. Okay. Thieves must most certainly would have circumvented the guards. Means they would have dodged the guards to rip the mummy and take the goals out. Okay, so now let's come back to the text. First of all, it was discovered in 1922 by Hort Carter. He really had a hard time because that was the very first time when it was taken out of the tomb. Now let us see what what did he face? How come he had a hard time there? Okay. He recorded the treasure for months and months. It took him months to record all the treasures, all the gold and all the things that was buried along with him. Everything was in gold. And uh, he was buried in a three nested coffins, but it's three nested coffins. That was the very first coffin, and it was a, it was not a plain box-like coffin. It was uh, in the shape of a human being, with head and with body shape and all that. So in the first layer, in the first coffin, that was made of pure gold. The small, the baby pharaoh, he was laid of there. And over on, on it, there was another coffin 
and there was a third layer of coffin. So total three layers of coffin were there. And uh, when he found it out, he found that it was adorned with garlands of willow, olive leaves, celery, lotus petals and cornflowers. So all those things were found in Egypt or in that part of the world in the month of March or April. So that shows that the baby pharaoh was buried or he died sometimes in March or April. So he wanted to, uh, when he opened the first layer of coffin, second layer of coffin, when he went to the third layer of coffin, he wanted to take the pharaoh, the mummy, we should use the word mummy now, because he had been mummified already. So he wanted to take the mummy out of the coffin to study it and uh, to take the jewels out so it could not be stolen away. So he wanted to take it out, but he could not because due to the raisins, due to the raisins which had been used to mummify the furrow, uh, it had hardened like a cement and it had hardened and it was cemented to, cemented to the coffin. So he could not lift the mummy from there. So what did he do? He thought uh, that for, um, I have to melt. He thought of melting the raisins. He had an idea that I will put it out in the open, in the open land, in the open sunshine, the scorching heat, the scorching heat. Uh, and it was, the temperature was uh, around 149 degree Fahrenheit that is equal to almost 65 degrees Celsius. You can just imagine how hot it, it must be. So he put the mummy there. He kept it for some time thinking that the raisins would, would melt away and he could lift the mummy from there. But nothing happened. Nothing happened. So he had no choice but to cut it out. So he decided that somehow he has to leave the mummy out from there. So he took the decision to chisel it out. Now what is a chisel? It's a sort of small tool we use in the garden to dig something. So he took the chisel and he chiseled away from there and he cut. He cut that mummy. He cut the major joints. First of all, he dissected the head from there, then all the major joints, he took it away. Then he lifted the mummy out and took all the precious things to store it. Now he had to reassemble it again. He had to reassemble it again and put it again in that coffin bag. So now that mummy. Now that mummy of King Tut, it was there for almost 40 years or to be exact 46 years and after 46 years an anatomy professor he took it out for an x-ray because the technology has modernized with time. So initially in initial part when they when they look for the mummy in old days, the only objective was to find out how much treasure they had, how rich the mummy was, how rich the pharaoh was. But with the increasing technology, the thinking changed also. Now they wanted to find out the reason behind the death. Because children, as uh, when you come to when you come to study. In the text. When you come to study more, you will come to know that King Tut or King Tutakhaten, Tutakhanam, he had many names. Okay? So when he died, when he died, he was almost, oh, he was only 19 years old. 
hardly 19 years old. So it was so it was a matter of uh, matter of curiosity for everybody to find out the reason behind the death of such small king. That's why it has been excavated again in 1968 to X-ray to find out something more. But an X-ray could not tell me anything. It cannot tell me anything. They simply found out that the rib cage was missing. It could be for any reason. It could be for any reason. <coughs> okay, so they kept it again back in the place and again after a long, long time after almost 40 years not 40 exactly because after six, 1968 it was again excavated in 2005 in the year 2005 and on the day of 5th January 2005 the time was 6 p.m. 6 p.m. The technology by that time had developed a lot. A CT scan and all those things had been introduced already. So now they decided uh, the troop was in was uh, leaded. Okay, it was led by Professor Zahi Havas of the anatomy department, and he decided that we should take the mummy for CT scan to find out the reason behind the death of such a small king. What happened? Because initially they could only guess that he must have been murdered out of jealousy or something or maybe he has gone for <coughs> has gone in the forest and some animals must have killed him. So it could be only guess. So until they find the real reason, until they find the truth nothing more could be done except guessing and guessing so in 2005 they took the mummy out they prepared for CT scan and that time that time the place was full of tourists and that is the opening of the chapter when they took it out for the CT scan how was the atmosphere? An angry wind stirred up ghostly dust devils as King Tut was taken from his resting place in the ancient Egyptian cemetery known as the Valley of Kings. Okay, he was buried there. The place he was buried was known as the Valley of Kings because all the kings or many many kings, most of the kings of Egypt, that is pharaohs, they were, they had been buried there. So that was a place almost estimated uh, for burying all the furrows. So he had been taken from there and when he was taken from there, the weather got angry. The weather got an angry wind, wind stirred up. So why? Why the weather was furious? Because there was a belief, there was a belief that once you interfere with the resting soul inside the coffin, inside the mummy, once you interfere with a mummy, uh, they will curse you for that. You will be cursed upon. So for all the disturbance of the weather, of the surrounding, there was fear inside everybody that the mummy must have got angry that while he was sleeping inside the coffin, while he was sleeping inside the tomb, it had been taken out. So the tourists were curious. At the same time, the tourists were afraid also. Because these things, the things which humans had no way to know, the thing of life after death. Nobody knows that. So there's only a guess. So all of them, they were afraid of something mysterious. They were afraid of something being cursed upon them. But somehow they managed to take it to the city scan, city scanner. And the city scanner had been, okay, it had been supported by 
the National Geographic, National Geographic Society, and the Simons. Actually, the Simons it was a brand. It is a brand name, and it is a company which makes all the medical equipments for research and all that thing. So it was a sponsored by, uh, co-sponsored by, we should say, by National Geographic Society and Simons Group. So they sponsored this very very costly CT scan machine. It costed many hundred million dollars. So it was taken there for uh, the CT scan of the tomb. So finally it was scanned and once his skull was put inside there, you must have seen, all of you must have seen the CT scan machine. So all of you know that the head part goes first. So he, he was laid down and uh, all the workers they took him and the head part went with his hand and the leg part. So one by one it went inside but when the leg part, when the end part went, when the CT scan was done, something happened. It stopped. It stopped working. It didn't move at all. So all of them, they became afraid again. They were suspicious. Was it cursed? Or is it something else? So they looked for the reason and what was it there? What was the reason? small sand, a small piece of sand was stuck in between and the motor was, it went wrong. So somehow the, the, the fan went off. There was a small piece of sand stuck in the fan and the fan was not working. Somehow they managed to find a spare one and they replaced it and uh, they thought that uh, the CT scan which was done, uh, they were thinking whether the record had been erased, but somehow they were, like, they were lucky that the record was still there. So later, later on, what did they prove? What did they find out? That there was nothing wrong. No murder was there with, means he was not murdered, there was no injury, there was nothing, and everything was intact. And the small injury, the small breakage might be due, might be at the time when Howard Carter took, took the mummy out from the tomb the very first time in 1922, when he cut into many fragments to take the mummy out of the tomb that time many parts were defected and destroyed so professor jahi Havas, he was happy he was happy and finally he felt relieved that there was nothing wrong with the mummy he said i was worried but now i think i will go and sleep means he was relaxed now that in the finding there was nothing wrong with the Mummy and the mummy was put back into the tomb and it was put back into the into its resting place. Now let's come to the family background of uh, King Tut. Okay, the small pharaoh. He belonged to the 18th dynasty. 18th dynasty of Egyptian king, the ruling king, and possibly his grandfather, whose name was Amenhotep III. Okay, he ruled. He ruled uh, for almost four decades. It was almost 40 years, and that was the golden age for Egypt, because people were very happy, and he ruled. He was a very powerful king, because children, if somebody can rule in a place for uninterrupted 40 years means he must be very powerful he must be very good ruler and he must have done very good things to his people that's why he ruled for so long so he was there for more than 40 years and that was golden period of egypt but after his demise his son 
took over the throne and he was Amenhotep IV. And children, when Amenhotep IV came to reign, that was that was the worst period Egypt could ever dream of. That could the worst period Egypt could ever have. So what did he do? The country almost suffered. The people of the country almost cried because Amenhotep IV, he was sort of wacky kind of king. Wacky means in Hindi, you say sanki, means I'll do whatever I want to do without any reason. Okay. So, first of all, he did a very bad thing that is Egypt known was Egypt was known for its very very ancient culture. But when he came into reign, when he came to reign the country, first of all, he destroyed all the idols of uh, God Amun. God Amun, that is the god of sun and air, who was the god worshipped at that time. Worshipped when he came or worshipped before that. So there were a lot of temples of God Amun and idols. So first of all he destroyed everything. He destroyed everything and he changed his capital. He changed his capital also. He changed the tribes and then he worshipped King Aten. Aten means sun disk. So he smashed all the idols of King Amun and replaced him with God, not King, sorry, God, with Aten. Aten is sun disk. He worshipped and reduced the worship of God Aten. And not only that, he changed his name also. Initially his name was Amenhotep. Now he changed it to Akhe, Akhe Tanen, Akhe Taten, sorry, Akhe Taten. That is, he took the word Aten, Akhe Aten, means servant of Aten, servant of God Aten or servant of God Sun. He moved his capital also, he destroyed everything and the people of Egypt. His citizens suffered, but one day he has to die. So his time came also when he died, his son, that is Tutakhaten, he was very, very young. So some unknown person, somebody from his kingdom, self, somebody from his relative, nobody knows. His name was Smen Khakre. He was there, he ruled. He reigned, but he was there for a very, very short period and he came unknown, he vanished unknown. Nobody knows anything about him except the fact that in between Akhetaten and Tutankhaten, he ruled for some time. Now, after Smen Kakra left, they crowned the people, they crowned Tutankhaten, the small boy small pharaoh. Once he has been crowned, he is pharaoh. So small pharaoh, he was hardly 10 years old, 9 or 10 years old, so he was crowned. He was crowned to rule the country. But children, you can just imagine how can a boy of now 9 years old, nobody can be mature enough to rule the country. So people must have advised him how to do this, how to do that. But he was there the thorn, he reigned there and but one good thing he did that he changed he changed back he replaced the old god Amen and he replaced it all he reconstructed the temples and everything he changed the capital so whatever destruction his father has done he worked on that. He worked to replace it back in the old ways and he also changed his name because the name given to him was Tushankhaten, that is Aten. The word Aten was there. She was given by his father. So he changed it to, he changed it the name of God Ammon. So he changed his name to be 
to ten common that is the living image of god amen the living image of god amen so he ruled his country for almost 9 years and one fine day nobody knows how he went to the demise he expired he was dead he was dead and he had no descendant he has no son he had two small unborn daughters which is not mentioned in the book but once you go into the history once you go into the history you will learn a lot of things about king tutankhamun so he was buried there and uh, he was buried in a hurry perhaps because of that his tomb was undiscovered and undestroyed for many many years because many many tombs had been looted long back but not his that's why when the first time howard carter excavated the tomb out he was just uh, dazzled he was dazzled to see so much of artifacts everything was in gold everything from his toys from bad balls from uh, all all things from his furniture his aragamens everything was in gold because people in old times in old egypt we should say they believed in life after that and they believed that once the person is buried his soul will remain there so they all the edible things milk and all those things for him everything was there everything was kept so that is the story and what happened at the end at the end it was the time of winter so it was again put in the same place his tomb was buried back again and when everybody came the night grew dark and they were relieved they were happy to see that the constellation that uh, the constellation known as the osiris osiris is the god of afterlife and that was shining just above the tomb of the small pharaoh so according to them that was a good omen for them means the god is watching over the boy and if the star is shining that that means that means god is smiling on you it's guarding on you so it it was a good omen for them they were happy that it was a happy ending happy ending in the sense that when the city scanned the reason for the death the city scanned find of the reason and the reason for death was not murder they were relieved that the boy was not he did not die because of murder and children i really recommend you to go into the google and read the story because i'm pretty sure i'm very much sure that you will enjoy reading because this is a reality this is reality of a real king who died who died at a very young age after ruling kingdom so till date the search is going on and uh, they have found out many things also so now i leave it to you i have read it already i have enjoyed the story so now i'll give you a homework i leave it to you to explore more and more about king tutankhamun or in short they call king tut king tut whatever you call because this is not our language so children have a very very good time and i hope you will enjoy with the homework of exploring more and more about king tutankhamun of egypt till then have a very very happy time i'll come up again with a lovely poem for you tomorrow have a good day children